Hi guys, my name is Ryan and today I'm going to talk to you about bath salts. I'm sure many of you guys have already probably heard about bath salts before given the fact that they've appeared pretty abundantly in the media from news outlets to even popular Hollywood films. Bath salts, here I come. Hello? <laughs> Although it seems funny in this instance, the continued depiction of bath salts in the media and in films like Sausage Party underscores a growing problem in the abuse of these substances. Let's start by discussing exactly what bath salts are. Well, bath salts are a class of drugs that fall under the category of synthetic cathinones. These are drugs that are derivatives of cathinone which is a naturally occurring stimulant that's found in the leaves of the cat bush. Synthetic cathinones are similar to amphetamines in chemical structure, and they've been shown to mimic the effects of cocaine, MDMA, and other amphetamines. The most commonly abused synthetic cathinones are mephedrone, methylone, and MDPV. Now, given the fact that a presentation has already been given on mephedrone, Coupled with the fact that MDPV is the most common constituent found in bath salt products here in the United States, this presentation is going to focus first and foremost on MDPV. Use of the cat leaf for its stimulatory effects dates back to the 10th century, and it's associated with the Arabian Peninsula and certain regions of Eastern Africa. Synthesis of MDPV was first described in 1967 but reports of its abuse was not seen until the early 2000s. MDPV was largely ignored by government officials until the year 2003, when it was listed as a legal alternative to MDMA on an internet drug website. MDPV was first detected in Japan in 2006, in Germany in 2007, and in Finland in 2008. In October of 2011, Mephedrone, MDPV, and methylone were temporarily classified as Schedule I controlled substances. A permanent Schedule I distinction was attributed in July of 2012 to mephedrone and MDPV. Bath salts are distributed under trade names such as Cloud9, Lunar Wave, Vanilla Sky, Ivory White, Red Dove, and Blue Silk. They were previously sold as recreational drugs in gas stations, head shops, and even convenience stores. Bath salts are often labeled as being not for human consumption in order to avoid penalty under the Analog Enforcement Act. MDPV is a beta ketoamphetamine and it has structural similarity to dopamine, methamphetamine, MDMA, and pyrovalerone. It's highly lipophilic which means that it readily crosses the blood-brain barrier, and this translates to a very fast onset of action. A common reason for taking bath salts is the euphoric feeling that they give users. Along with this, many users report a boost in self-confidence. Increased alertness, wakefulness, and increased libido are all other commonly reported symptoms of MDPV use. Agitation, paranoia, hallucinations, psychosis, and headaches are the most frequent symptoms reported in patients experiencing negative side effects. Peripherally, the most common negative symptoms are hyperthermia, hypertension, tachycardia, nausea, vomiting, and chest pain. More serious symptoms of synthetic cathinone toxicity include liver failure, kidney failure, and the development of compartment syndrome. In some cases, these can even lead to death. Now we're going to talk a little bit about MDPV's mechanism of action. This slide discusses an inhibition assay that was conducted to examine the inhibition of dopamine uptake as a result of MDPV administration. 
Dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin were used to assess transport activity at the dopamine transporter, norepinephrine transporter, and the serotonin transporter, respectively. Figures A, C, and E illustrate that MDPV is a potent uptake blocker at the dopamine transporter and norepinephrine transporter with weaker effects at the serotonin transporter. When compared with cocaine, MDPV is 50 times more potent as an uptake blocker at the dopamine transporter and it's 10 times more potent as an uptake blocker at the norepinephrine transporter. MDPV shows high selectivity for catecholamine uptake inhibition and catecholamines are basically a class of monoamines that include compounds like dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. Unfortunately, a traditional uptake inhibition assay such as this one can't really tell us whether MDPV is acting as a transporter substrate or as a transporter blocker. As a result, additional experiments were conducted by researchers. In this experiment here, researchers examined the effects of MDPV on efflux of a radio-labeled substrate called MPP in cells that are stably expressing the human dopamine transporter. In these experiments, cells were pretreated with the ionophore monensin, which alters ionic gradients to increase cytoplasmic sodium. Monensin enhances the releasing capability of transporter substrates, but it doesn't do the same for uptake blockers. Figure A demonstrates that MDPV produces a modest low efficacy efflux of MPP in cells expressing this dopamine transporter. It's important to note that, that monensin pretreatment does not increase MDPV induced efflux of MPP. On the other hand, however, it dramatically enhances efflux induced by the transporter substrate amphetamine. These findings provide clear and decisive evidence that effects of MDPV on efflux are due to uptake blockade rather than it working as a transporter substrate. This slide describes a research experiment that was conducted on adult rats in examining place preference as a result of MDPV reconditioning. The percentage time spent in the drug paired side was measured both pre and post conditioning and these percentages were then compared with each other and with the control group. All doses of MDPV produced a significant increase in the time spent on the drug paired side, with no such increase seen in the vehicle or saline treated animals. This suggests that MDPV produces rewarding effects, which probably play a role in the addictive nature of the compound. To summarize, MDPV is a potent catecholamine selective transporter blocker. It acts at multiple transporters, but we're mostly concerned with the dopamine transporter. MDPV is significantly more potent than cocaine, and it acts mainly in the striatum. In recent years, the abuse of synthetic cathinones, or bath salts, has become a major worldwide health concern. A recent report released by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration showed that nearly 23,000 emergency room visits in 2011 were a result of cathinone abuse. The American Association of Poison Control Centers reported that from 2010 to July 31, 2012, 8,520 calls relating to human exposure to bath salts were processed. The DEA's National Forensic Laboratory Information System indicates that federal, state, and local law enforcement officials encountered MDPV in 49 states and the District of Columbia since 2009. Synthetic cathinones are synthesized by underground chemists. Due to the clandestine nature of the work, many of these synthetic cathinones are likely contaminated with other dangerous substances. Internet sales and marketing have made synthetic cathinones easily available on a global scale. Since MDPV was banned in the U.S., manufacturers have now introduced novel replacement cathinones as a means to skirt regulatory control. Recently, we've seen a number of second and third generation MDPV analogs on the marketplace. The most common of these is alpha-PVP, and it's starting to become pretty widespread.